and welcome. My name is Christina and this is my little neglected corner of the internet. Um, I'm sure that most of you, or maybe it's just me, I'm not sure, but I started out 2020 with the best of intentions. I had all these plans, all these things I was going to do. I was going to start podcasting more regularly. I was going to knit samples of all of my colorways. I was going to pre-plan shop updates to have them every other week. And I just had so many things that I planned on doing. And then COVID happened and it just really threw a wrench into my plans. So it never really happened. But I thought since it's almost Advent. It's almost time um, to cast on all of our Advent things and I'm sure most of you are probably here because you've heard about my 24 stripe Advent skein. Um, this is a skein of sock yarn that has 24 different colors um, stripes in it and the idea behind it is that you will knit one stripe or maybe a bit more every day in the days leading up to Christmas and then on Christmas morning you'll have a brand new pair of socks to wear. Um, so I thought with with this coming so soon, this would be the perfect time for me to record a little something for you guys and talk a little bit about um, Advent, show up what I've been what I've been doing and talk about an upcoming update. So first of all, I'm going to show you some of my quarantine knits. Um, that when when COVID first happened and we started into the first lockdown a few friends of mine had an idea of doing a knit along and they were all knitting the stephen west uh, vertices unite shawl which is a five skein um project and they had all been wanting to cast this on for for a long time and had yarn ready for it well i had five skeins of yarn that i purchased for a different project also a very long time ago and to me, this seemed like the perfect opportunity to finally cast it on. And maybe with my friends cheering me on and this little support group, I might actually knit the whole thing. And um, so the project that I had was a few years ago, Hohi Locatelli released a pattern called Fading Point Wrap, I believe it's called. Um, and I loved it. I loved it exactly the way that she, she had knit it up. Um, so I ordered the kit. Uh, dyed up by Le Bien Aimé in the same colors that she had used. Now, I don't actually remember the name of it. I do, however, remember it was French. So even if I did remember, I was not going to try to pronounce it on here because um, I don't speak French and <laughs> I'm afraid I would butcher it and embarrass myself and maybe upset people. But I cast this on with my friends and they were totally cool with me knitting something different. Um, and this is what it looks like. So this is it here. Uh, let's see if we can find the center point. So you've probably seen it before. It's um, a large rectangular wrap and it comes into a point here in the middle, which is on mine, I decided to do the um, lightest color in the middle, which I do think is, is what Hohi had done in the pattern as well. So this is the center and then it just fades out into this stunning purple, like this moody purple color. And you can kind of see the, the detail there a little bit. So I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. And it is, it's huge. It's really big, which I knew it was going to be a large project um, because I'd read a lot of comments on Ravelry and looked through a lot of pictures there. And people had said that they ended up using quite a bit of their yarn. Um, some people used most of their yarn. And so I was prepared for it to be a really big knit. Now I am a relatively tight knitter. I don't really think I knit super tight because I don't have trouble moving the yarn on my needles. Um, but I do often have to go up a needle size and when I cast this on, um, I cast on with the needles uh, suggested in the pattern and then I made a boo-boo and I had to pull it all out. But um, the little bit that I did get knit, I did really like the fabric so I didn't want to change the needle size so I just went with it. But I did end up with a fair bit of yarn left over. Um, so now I'll have to find another project that I can that I can use that in. I'm hoping to do another fade project, maybe a cowl or, or maybe um, I've seen a pair of socks as well that was faded and they look really, really nice. So this was probably my largest 
project that I have knit while we have been sort of locked up. Um, with that said, I, I live in Canada. I live in um, just outside of Toronto in Ontario. And at the moment, uh, we're not on lockdown, like kids are at school, which is why I can't even record anything for you guys. Otherwise it would be a gong show around here. Um, I have five little boys for those of you who don't know. Um, so it's usually very, very loud at my house. Um, so the kids are at school. They are required to wear masks in class. Um, there is also a virtual option, but we, we chose to send our kids to school and just sort of monitor um, the status, the COVID status as it goes. And thankfully so far, there hasn't been any um, isolations or anything at their school. So they've been quite lucky. And I think it's been really good for, for their mental health to see their friends and be with their teacher um, because we did do virtual school in the spring and it, it wasn't great. It was not great. It was not fun. <laughs> so I think it's been really great for the kids to be back in school and seeing their friends again. Um, but other than that, we are currently limited to gatherings of 10 people inside and 25 outside, unless it's an organized event such as um, sports, then you're allowed, I think it's 50, I think. I'm not sure, it doesn't apply. Um, and then we were, we have to wear, there's a mask mandate. You have to wear a mask in, in public indoor spaces. So it's really not too bad. We're not too, too affected right now. I think the hardest part is not gathering with our family as much as we would like to. We were able to in the summer and that was really, really good, um, to get together. The kids get to play with their cousins and go swimming at their grandparents' house and just run around the field and, um, we really, really miss that. I can't wait till it eases a little bit and we're able to have gatherings with our families. I'm really hoping by Christmas because Christmas is probably my favorite holiday um, or second favorite, it depends. I love Christmas. The only thing that makes it hard is I was born in Denmark and my whole family lives in Denmark. so we don't typically get to see both of our families at Christmas and that makes it a little hard. Um, so I don't know, it's a toss up between Christmas and Thanksgiving, but either way, Christmas is super special and I really hope we can all get together with our families at, at that point. Um, so for the next quarantine project that I knit, I knit a baby blanket for my nephew. Um, my brother and sister-in-law had a little boy this summer uh, which was also really, really special because um, in the days leading up to it, I got to babysit my niece and she is just, she's the sweetest little girl and I love spending time with her and it was so nice to have her around the house and she kept those boys busy. <laughs> she had them running all over the house, finding toys for her and she is the boss. She's two years old, but she is the boss and if the 12 year old is told to sit down and have a cup of tea, he sits down and has a cup of tea. So um, it was really special to have her around um, just while my sister-in-law was, was getting ready for the baby. And then of course, when he was born, that was super nice. And he, um, he shares a name with, with um, one of my sons. It's my son's middle name. And it's also shared with um, my brother-in-law, so the baby's dad, and my husband's grandfather. So that was really special. So I had wanted to knit a blanket for him and years ago, I guess 14 years ago now, the crown prince and princess of Denmark had a son and this blanket, this pattern took the country by storm. It's a Shetland pattern and I can't quite remember where the blanket came from. Um, if it was knit by her mother or if somebody had just gifted it to them. I can't remember the story. I'll have to have to look it up. But they, when they left the hospital, they had the baby wrapped in this blanket. And since then, everybody has, has knit this blanket. It was published in a magazine. And I know my mom has probably knit 20? She's knit quite a few. She's knit one for every one of my boys. And she often gets commissioned by coworkers and other friends that she knows to knit one for, for new babies in their families. So the name of the pattern is 
um, De Hele Kongeri, which is Danish, and I'm not sure if there is a English translation, but I will link it down below, and if I can find an English version of it, I will link that as well. But um, this here is, this is a blanket that my mother had knit for one of my boys, because obviously I gave my nephew his blanket when he was born. So this is it here. You can see it has like a large square in the middle, and then there's this beautiful feather and fan that's knit onto it. And then there is this border, lace border that's knit onto the edge. So it's really, really pretty and very sort of intricate. And um, I love it, I love it. And I have always wanted to knit one of these blankets and I thought, you know what? A new nephew, my first nephew, would be the perfect opportunity. Sorry, that's just a little fuzz that's on it, but I'll, I'll fix that later. So I knit that for him, um, and uh, I knit most of it in the summer after I finished the Fading Point shawl. I cast on for this blanket, and I knit most of it sitting and watching my boys swimming in the pool and just supervising. And almost without fail, every time I would bring it with me, um, this is out of my, my in-laws place and they live on a large piece of land in the, in the country. So I would be sitting watching the kids swimming in the pool and my brother and sister-in-law would come up the driveway. So I'd have to like tuck it away so they wouldn't see. So it was a surprise for him, but I'm like, oh, we're cutting it close getting this thing finished because they always showed up. But I did get it done and I'm really, really pleased with it. I knit his in a um, 70 20 10 blend. So 70% superwash merino, 20% cashmere, and 10% nylon. So it's nice and cozy warm. Okay, so after I knit that and I really enjoyed it, then I decided I wanted to knit a blanket for myself. And this is another pattern that's very similar to the baby blanket. It is the quill pattern by, it's a Brooklyn Tree pattern. I can't remember if it was um, Jared Flood who wrote the pattern or not, but I'll link, I'll link the pattern down below. And um, it is, however, knit in Brooklyn Tweed um, Arbor is what I wanted to knit it in. And I have seen several versions of this um, of this blanket or shawl. I decided to knit mine in, in a DK, Arbor is a DK weight. And um, I'm hoping it will be a large lap blanket. Um, like I said, the pattern is very similar to the baby blanket, except the feather and fan um, doesn't have nearly as many eyelets. So it's not going to grow quite as much. I'm trying to see if I can find a stretch here to show you. So this is it here. So this here, the light gray is the large square. So there's a corner there and a corner here. So it's kind of scrunched up on the needles, but it's it's quite large. And then this here is the feather and fan portion. And this yellow line right here, that is the center. So it's kind of at a standstill at the moment and it has been for a little while because I wasn't quite in love with the co colors that I've chosen. As I'm, I do like the colors, this yellow, however, in the pictures online, it looked more like a butter yellow. And now that I'm knitting with it, it's a more of a mustard yellow, which I should have known, but, um, and I thought it might be fine, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not loving it. So it's just been sitting in timeout for a little while and I'm contemplating switching in another color of Arbor that I have on hand. So I'll just show you the colors that I am using. So where's the main color? Here we go. So the main color is Driftwood. This is Driftwood. Like I said it's Arbor, it's by Brooklyn Tweed, which is a DK um, weight. I think these are only 50 gram balls. It's 145 yards in, in a skein. And then this is Lovat. It's the green and the dark gray is Morandi. And the pink is Mesa. Lisa, it's like a um, terracotta pink gleaming color. And then I had used 
crumb, which is similar to Hayloft, I would say. Um, I'm not sure if Hayloft is only in their um, Tweedy or, or Heathered bases, but it looks very similar to Hayloft for me. And I do love it. I mean, I have a sweater pretty much in the same color. I do like it and I do have a plan for it because I do think I'm gonna have some of the driftwood lift over. And I have wanted a pair of mucklucks for a very long time. Um, I believe they're by Andrea Maori, and I thought these would be really perfect for it. I'm one of those people who gets cold. Like if I go outside and it's snowing, it's below zero or below freezing. It takes me hours hours to warm back up. I just, I don't heat back up very easily. Um, so in the house, I do tend to wear my hand-knit socks or slippers around the home. So I thought, you know, a pair of mucklucks would be really nice. So the color that I'm thinking about switching out the crumb for is this color, which is Nightfall. It is really nice sort of purple color. Um, and I think it would look really nice in this blend. So there, it would be, oh, oh dear. Okay, let's try this again. So this would be the combination as opposed to this. But I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure yet. I am contemplating um, just fading it a little bit different and changing the color sequence as well. So we'll see how that ends up. But um, these are the colors that I have available and I can either go this the way it is, which I actually really like looking at it here. <laughs> and then there's this combination. So we'll see what I decide, but that was a project that I really did enjoy and I've knit on a fair a fair bit. Um, I have half of that feather and fan and then there's a lace edge border that goes on, which again, I think is very similar to the baby blanket I just showed you. So that should be a lot of fun whenever I get around to it. And then I was also super lucky and I got to do a test knit from Melanie Berg. And if you've ever tried <laughs> to do one of her test knits, you'll know that it fills up lickety split. Um, so I was really, really happy when I was able to do this test knit for her and it is for her Together Apart shawl. Um, I'll show you mine. So here it is an asymmetrical triangle. on forever so there you go so the idea with this is you take four skeins of yarn so two skeins in either color and then you knit two shawls so you will knit one like this and then an inverted version where the colors obviously changed around um, I did only knit one um, and I'm really happy with it this is this sort of purpley gray. It is a plucky knitter colorway that I had picked up at the Shindig 2017. Um, it's on one of their cashmere bases and it's really, really nice and, and squishy and warm. It's more plump than your average fingering, um, but I really, I really like it, but it was a one of a kind or one hit wonder as they call them colorway. So it's not a repeatable color. I just happened to have two skeins that were very, very similar. So I used them in this project. And then the contrasting color. So I have it here in Knitting It Up. Um, they have since changed their name to, I think it's Annie Parin, Perrin. I'm not sure how to pronounce your last name, Annie. I'm sorry if I messed it up. Um, but I will, I will put it down below so that you can um, go visit her shop because she does have a lot of beautiful things. And this here is one of her Gilmore Girls colorways. It's called Oi with the Poodles Already. So it's a really pretty speckly pink. And I just really liked how it went with, with the um, purpley gray. And I have a few skeins of this that Annie so kindly gave to me um, that are meant for a sweater. But since I knew I was only going to use a few grams of it, I thought it's perfect. So I put it in here and it really didn't take me long to knit to knit this. I wish I paid better attention because the pattern is written for 
um, skeins of yarn that weigh over 100 grams. And my skeins weighed 100 grams, and I think it calls for 105 or 110, so I ran out. Um, so this here is the lace section, and I think I knit three and a half repeats, whereas you're supposed to knit four. So, but it still looks fine, still looks fine. It's okay, <laughs> even though I can be really picky about not knitting exactly um, per pattern, um, it I don't mind. And if you look closely, you can see that there are little hearts in the lace. And this lace, I did not find intuitive at all. Um, there is some of the rows that are really busy and I had to pay attention and use lifelines and all of that. So if you do decide to tackle this because it is a beautiful shawl, I highly recommend using lifelines when you get to the large lace section because I definitely needed them. Um, okay, so moving on from quarantine knits, I think it's time that we talk about 2020 Advent. Um, thank you so much to everybody who is participating this year, everybody who's purchased a skein or shared about it or liked or commented on any of my Instagram things. I really, really appreciate it. This was an idea that popped into my head uh, three years ago and at the time I just thought, you know what, this would be a really fun alternative to like the mini skein calendars. Um, because I don't always know what I'm going to be using my mini skeins for and I thought this would be a nice alternative, a more affordable option for, for some people. And um, I dyed up about 50 skeins that first year and I thought if I sell those that would be fun. Like I wonder if even 50 people would want to wanna do this. And the demand was crazy. I couldn't have really anticipated it so I ended up doing quite a bit more that first year. And then last year I thought it was really prepared and we listed a lot more on the first day. They all sold out on the first day and I was getting emails from people saying, you know, why didn't you have more available? You knew how popular this was last year. And I'm thinking, oh dear, like I literally sold more in one day than I did the whole year before. So this year, again, I was trying to be really prepared. I had been prepping yarn for months, like since the spring, to have it all ready. And then my plan had been to dye yarn in September and August, um, to have it all ready and um, could do like a big update and really be ahead of the, the, the curve. And everything was going great until COVID happened and restrictions came into place and when I went to do the colorway for this skein I realized I don't have enough dye for some of the colors that I want to do in the volume that I anticipated I would likely need to be able to dye so obviously I was going to place a yarn order um, I unfortunately found out that the company I use for dyes were not shipping to Canada. They were only shipping within the United States. And I understand because they had to scale back just like everybody else and adhere to social distancing in their warehouses and couldn't have as many people working at a time. Um, so I understand that's an easy way to do it. Just ship locally. Makes sense. Um, but they kept saying, okay, maybe by this time, maybe by this time. And every time that time would just about be there, they said, oh no, another couple of weeks or another month. And I ended up emailing them at one point and I said, can you just like, please just be upfront with me and tell me, is it at all likely that I'll be able to order this by a certain date? I can't remember what I told them, September or something. And they said, no, it's not likely that we will open for, um, international shipments till sometime yeah sometime in September I think I probably had asked for August so I was like oh, I have all this yarn ready and I really want it to be ahead of the curve so I could ship it out a bit earlier this year and I can't get my dyes so it was at this point that I reached out to a really sweet friend of mine and I can't thank her enough so I do I'm gonna do a little shout out for her here Denise you save Christmas, as far as I'm concerned, you 
saved Christmas because my wonderful friend Denise, and you would know her as on Earth Tones Girl, she totally saved my bacon because she let me place probably the biggest dye order I have ever placed and have it shipped to her house. And she then forwarded the package to me and it got here really quickly. And I'm just, I'm so grateful because without, without her help, I don't know, I don't know if it would have happened this year, guys. So really, thank you, thank you, thank you, Denise. You don't know what it means to me and I'm so grateful for you. Um, with that said, Advent did happen and I did dye up even more skeins than last year. So this is the biggest year for the Advent skein ever. And I'm super excited because they've all been shipped out and they have started arriving all over the world. Um, again, this year we have knitters from obviously Canada and the US. We have knitters from, oh dear, from Germany and Denmark and Sweden and Norway and Switzerland and the UK and Australia, Greenland, Iceland, Japan, um, so many places. And it is really, really exciting for me to see where we ship them out. And we have this fun little thing in our house where we have um, like a shipping bingo. Uh, we usually do it by um, like there's Canada and then there's US and then we just sort of keep a running list of everywhere else. And filling the map <laughs> of all the US states is just so, so much fun for me. And it's like, you know, we got Hawaii and some of these states you don't necessarily expect um, and this year, every single state is participating with the exception of Mississippi. So they're going everywhere else. Oh, and Washington DC, but everybody else is participating. So that's really, really fun for me. And like I said, just playing bingo with the kids and trying to figure out where the state is actually located <laughs> has been really fun for us. So that was, that was great. Um, but I thought I would show you uh, because some of you haven't done an advent skein before, so I will show you sort of where we started and where we're going. So this here is my 2018 advent skein, still in progress, because apparently I can't knit <laughs> my own yarn. Anyways, here's my 2018 skein. I think there's 18 stripes already done here, and I've just started the heel flap, um, which is a partridge, Aya partridge heel. So this is my 2018 colorway. And what I learned from this first year doing it, um, the first year, when whenever I've dyed the skeins, and I've done this every year, um, this year included, I dye up the skein and it's split into two even halves. So when you receive it, there's actually two half skeins. And um, like I said, they, they perfectly match. So I just wound up each half skein into our cake and I, I cast on. So that is how far I got. And this is what the ball looks like still left. And for the 2018 skein, I went with these sort of narrow stripes. And like I said, this is just the leg and I've knit 18 stripes. So clearly I won't have a full pair of socks. They'll be like yoga socks <laughs> if I only knit one stripe a day for the month of December. So for the 2019 skein, I changed the width of the stripes this is my 2019. I changed the width of the stripes just a tiny little bit. Each stripe is about an extra two rows, one or two rows. Um, in 2018, they were about three to four um, rows. And then let's see, can I line it up? There we go. And then in 2019, they're more like five or six rows per stripe. So I made them a little bit wider. And this here is actually one full repeat of the 2019 advent skein. So it made um, a sock that fits me perfectly. Um, I wear a women's size US seven and a half eight. Um, so this works out really well for me. Um, I probably would, to be super picky, knit it another two rows or another two stripes, sorry. Um, that's just my prefer preferred length of sock. Um, but otherwise you should get a nice size out of one repeat. So each of the half skeins that you receive in your advent skeins is two full repeats 
of the colorway. So this is one I knit the other sock with the second one and I still have one half skein left. Uh, so there's definitely plenty to make it as long or as big as you, you desire, or even make a second pair of shorties or whatever your heart desires. I've seen people do um, hats and fingerless mitts and throwing them into their scrappy, scrappy projects like a um, granny, granny stripe blanket uh, is really fun because you don't have to worry about knots and changing colors. You just keep going. Um, so yeah, this is the 2019 colorways. And I will say out of these two colorways, the 2020 is probably more like this one. They're not the same. They are completely distinct. Um, and I really like, I really like this year's color and in the skein, I, when I first dyed it, I skeined it up and I put it beside the other two colors and it looks almost identical to the 2019 <laughs> skein. So I'm like, oh, did I not change it up enough? So I was looking at my draft and no, they are definitely different and I do really like it. And I can't wait to cast on with all of you guys when you cast on. Um, I haven't knitted up myself, so I don't know what it uh, looks like knitted up. Well, to be honest, a customer, a very naughty customer, did <laughs> receive their skein and cast it on and sent me a picture <laughs> of it knit up, which was really nice. I appreciate seeing how how it knit up, um, but she's on the naughty list for next year. <laughs> so the other question I get a lot around this time when the yarn is starting to arrive is what pattern should I use? So this here is my basic self-striping sock pattern. You can see here, um, this is a kiss lips, kiss, kiss lips fish heel, fish kiss lips, that heel. We all know it, we never can pronounce it. This is the heel and then I add this mini gusset and heel flap in here because I have a high arc and it just gives me a little more room in the sock. And I do really like this for self-striping because it, does, it doesn't break up the stripe very much. Um, and in most cases, you really can't tell much at all. Like if you look here at this blue, it's just slightly narrower than the others and you can't really tell when you're wearing it. Um, so that is a pattern that I use a lot. Um, currently, it is only written for toe up. I'm working on written it for cuff down or rewriting it for cuff down. So there's both options because lately I've been knitting all my stuff, um, socks cuff down. But other options, um, Another option that you could use is something like this. This is a pattern called Socks on a Plane, which is just a plain vanilla um, sock pattern, but it has just this nice, simple cable that runs, runs down the side of the sock, um, just to give it a little bit of visual interest. And that is another pattern that I really like, and it's just got a slip stitch heel in it and then it has like a larger gusset. So this will break up your stripes just a little bit more, but it's fine. And another one that I really like, it's a bit busier. It's called Skype Socks. It is this pattern. It's a rib sock. And then it has this slip stitch detail here, which just makes it really fun. It's super easy. I'm knitting a um, sample using this pattern right now and it doesn't really slow down my knitting a lot, which is what I like uh, for for things like this. Like the Advent skein, it's supposed to be fun, it's supposed to be relaxing, and I like to just be able to sit down on the couch watching a TV, like watching a show on the TV with the kids, and not really have to look at my pattern or fuss about it with it much. So um, this is another really good option. And then for other suggestions, um, let's see. Um, Mina, Mina of the Knitting Expat podcast. I know she has a lot of sock patterns available and she has nice collections and whatnot, but I know she has quite a few that are just simple patterned socks, like a little bit of texture, but not a big busy pattern. I would, because the sock has this many colors in it, um, I don't personal preference. I don't like patterns that have a lot of eyelets and lace and stuff in it because I think it just gets lost um, with there being so many colors. So I would stick with something that is 
fairly simple. So Mina for sure, she has some nice patterns that are simple and just light texture. Um, another one that comes to mind is Heel Toe Dozy Doe, uh, which is a pattern by Kay, um, the Crazy Sock Lady, and that is a really fun pattern as well for silk striping. I'll go grab you a sample. Okay. I remembered I have been knitting a sample of another colorway using um, using that pattern and it's living in my orange, or my Gigi bag from Hokie & Co. <laughs> I was on that update, like with just ready to click as soon as those bags went live. Um, the very first time she had them available because I just, I just love this color and Hokie and Gigi are amazing. So I had to have the bag. And that is where my um, heel toe do -si -do, uh sock sample lives. So this here is the heel toe do -si -do pattern. And you can see it just has sort of like a chevron uh, pattern on the front. And then it is plain on the back. So that's another really fun one for self-striping yarn. Um, and that is again by Kay, the Crazy Sock Lady. And she also has quite a few sock patterns and there will definitely be something in there as well that you could use for self-striping that won't um, get lost in all of the stripes. So those are some of my recommendations. I'll link them down below. So I hope everybody can pick out their pattern. And I know for me, I'm going to knit up probably my cuffs to be ready to cast on um, the Advent yarn on December 1st. I'll probably cast on my cuffs on first Sunday at Advent and, um, and be ready for December 1st. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the Christmas season. We usually will start decorating on the first Sunday of Advent. So that's just a little over a week away and I'm looking forward to that. I gotta dig out all my bins. I know already I gotta go get um, some more pre-lit wreath for my staircase, which was a lot bigger than I thought. <laughs> so I know I've gotta go do that and I'm really looking forward to doing, to decorating the house and we've painted most of our house in the last year. So it will look just that much nicer and more finished. And then because I'm me, I do have a couple of home improvement projects <laughs> that I'm hoping to get done here when um, I sort of gear down. I don't tend to do a lot of dyeing in December. Um, I usually will start dying after Christmas, between Christmas and New Year and early in January, and then I'll have a shop update sometime in January, but I don't typically do updates in December um, and usually will only dye my club. So with that said, likely my last update of this year will be this coming Friday. It is a Christmas update with all of my holiday colorways. They'll be available on both the um, 8020, which is what this is knit in, as well as my Stellina base, which you can kind of maybe see there. Um, um, I have almost all of the colors that will be available will have both a Bliss, which is the 8020, and a Stellina base. Um, some of them are dyed on silver, some of them are dyed on gold. Um, the only one that's not available in a glittery option is my You've Been Elf colorway, but they will all be available on Friday and I will have a few advents available and this update is scheduled to ship out Monday or Tuesday next week. Um, so there's still a good chance if you live in Ontario or if you live in the United States that you would receive them in time for December 1st. If you live in British Columbia or Alberta, um, it takes a little bit longer to ship it there. It does go expedited, um, cannot post expedited, but I know that they have a bit of a delay um, happening right now. Uh, so it's taking a little bit longer to get there. So I can't guarantee we'll get there by December 1st. I mean, it's really hard to predict also because we're going into American Thanksgiving is, is coming up. So there's the Black Friday sale. So I want to get it out before all the crazy Black Friday and Cyber Monday uh, packages hit the mail. Um, so yes, the, there's big update. It's this Friday. It's likely going to be my last one of the year. Um, the shop will still be open. We'll still be shipping throughout December if you do order anything. Um, but I do only go to the post office once, maybe twice a week. Um, so just keep that in mind if you need something for a gift, um, that it might take a few days before it, it ships out. So anyways, thank you so much for, for spending a little bit of time with me today. I know I'm rusty and I really hope to do this more regularly. We'll see. I have been toying with the idea of possibly doing Vlogmas this year 
or maybe just the four Sundays of Advent posting a little something and um, introducing you guys to some of my my Christmas or our family Christmas traditions. Um, like I said, I grew up in Denmark, so most of my traditions are from Denmark. A lot of the baked goods and the decorations and, and that kind of thing are things that I grew up with as a, as a kid. Um, so I could share some of that with you. I'm not sure if that's something you guys would be interested in or if you already have enough Vlogmas going on. Um, it would also greatly depend on how cooperative my children are. <laughs> Cause like I said, five little boys, it can get pretty noisy around here. So we'll, we'll see about that. I'm, it's something I'm thinking about, but I'm not making any promises at this point, but I do hope to, to release something on this channel more regularly. Um, but other than that, thank you. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day and a great weekend ahead. Take care.